Hi, this is Margaret Bird and welcome to Color Quest. And check out that Japanese maple behind me. This is by far one of the brightest stars in the autumn based upon the foliage as it stands out amongst the other golden and orange leaves that are falling. Now, the Japanese maple transfers its color in a really beautiful way as well. So both in the dye pot as a dye itself as well as a fantastic option for echo printing. So if Japanese maple is a vibrant color star, in the dyer's world, there's a handful of organic matter that can create incredibly vivid colors. Last week on Color Quest, we looked at an iron blanket as a carrier blanket. But today, I'd like to look at how two vibrant dyes can play a role in an echo print. So join me, grab some leaves, grab some cotton, a handful of these dyes, and you are set to make some incredible echo prints. Last fall, I picked some of these red Japanese maple from the ground in this exact spot and used them in my dye pot to create a beautiful maroon dye. Feel free to check out that video on how to collect these leaves and use them as a stovetop dye. They make an incredible color and because of the tannins in the leaves, they will work beautifully with all kinds of textiles. And you can also learn a little bit about how iron interacts with the Japanese maple by watching that video. So I hope you'll check it out. It might help you to see a few other ways in which you could utilize Japanese maple in your dye practice. And although I love to talk about foraging for color in nature here on Color Quest, sometimes the plant materials that you hear about, you just can't find out there on one of your foraging trips. So when those instances happen, I turn to a company called Botanical Colors. I've mentioned them here before on Color Quest, and that is because they have an incredible shop filled with natural organic material for dyes. Now today, we're gonna to be looking at two of those dyes, neither of which I have access to in my forest near me. And I was able to purchase those colors from Botanical Colors. So I'm grateful for having that kind of a resource when I want some variety or some of the colors and plant material that I actually can't find myself in nature. And you may be wondering, what two organic dyes am I talking about? And those two would be matter and logwood. As you'll see as we create these dye blankets, the matter root and logwood that I use have incredibly deep, rich color bases. And I'm only gonna use an exhaust bath for this process. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. Let's go ahead and get into the dye studio and start working on our autumn leaf echo print with a dye blanket. All right, back in my dye studio, AKA my kitchen, and I wanted to quickly talk about one aspect of what we're going to do today before we dive into the echo printing process. And that is the mordants that I'm going to be showing you today. Now, last week we used a tannin mordant 
on our target fiber and it interacted beautifully with the iron blanket. Today, however, since we're using a dye blanket or an actual color to transfer onto our echo prints, I wanted to see what the different mordants might do on the substrates with an interaction with those dyes. So we're gonna be looking at tannin, alum, and iron as a pretreatment on your target fiber. I'm not going to show you the process of how to pretreat your fiber. I will give you percentages on how to do that for each one and which fibers they belong to. And you can go about grabbing a calculator and a scale and calculating that for yourself. It can be a little confusing, I know. I get a lot of questions about it. I too sometimes have trouble with the math, but trust me, once you get a hang of it, it's easy to do. Now I'm using mordants from Botanical Colors, so they also provide instructions on their website on the percentages or the recommended percentages of how you use the mordant itself based upon the weight of your fiber. A mordant is always a great option to increase your bond potential between natural color and your fiber. So with echo printing, guaranteed, prepping your fiber with a mordant is going to make you happier with your end result of an echo print. And today I thought it would be fun to look at how three different mordants actually could make a big difference in your final echo print. All right, now you've got the tools to pre-treat your fiber with one or all of these different mordants that I showed you. I'm going to try each one of them individually today with the echo print process and the dye blanket. Now the dye blanket, I'm also using dye matter that I purchased from Botanical Colors, the matter root and the logwood. However, I am not using a full strength version of this. I actually am repurposing from a dye session I had previously where I created dyes of matter root and logwood to test out how they would dye different textiles I had in a traditional dye pot scenario. What I did after is save the roots and chips themselves because they have a lot of exhaust potential. And what I mean by exhaust is that the strength of the dye of both the matter root and the logwood is quite powerful. And you will be able to coax out additional color after one, two, maybe three or four different soaks. So today I'm going to use an exhaust of those two dye sources and you will be pleasantly surprised at how strong the color is even on a second round of extracting color from these dye materials.
So which was your favorite? I have to say, although I shouldn't be surprised, I was in fact surprised with the iron, but it makes total sense that it was as dark as it was. You had the tannin of the leaves, as well as the dark dye, which interacted with the iron as well, which would make it darker. So it was really dark on dark. So it made sense. Although it doesn't stand out as a bright echo print, it did in fact make a really beautiful option with some subdued prints on that darker background. Now I would say probably my favorite, if I'm being honest, has to be the Alum Target textile. The interaction with the dyes and Alum really shows you how powerful of a mordant that is, and it will impact how the color responds. The tannin was lovely in a very subtle way. So my hope for you is that this will give you some inspiration to get out there and test out some different ways of echo printing using your leaves. Now, if it is not fall where you are, that's okay. You can do all of this with green leaves or different kinds of leaves. If you're in a place where there's eucalyptus, for example, get out there and use those eucalyptus because some varieties of eucalyptus have a really vibrant echo print ability. Maybe read a little bit about what kinds of leaves you can use. I've seen some really beautiful results with fern, for example, and although the fern may not leave much of a mark, it actually can create a really beautiful design element. So try it out if you have it. Like where I live, there's a lot of fern. <laughs> so maybe I'll try some fern leaves next time. Now, speaking of next time, on Color Quest next week, what I'd like to look at is dive a little bit further into tannins as a mordant, as well as a dye itself. The last two videos where we looked at tannin on a substrate, I was using gallo tannin or oak gall tannin. Next week on Color Quest, we're going to look at oak gall tannin and see some of the mystical and magical things that it can be used for in the world of natural dyeing. Now might be a good time for me to just remind you that down below in the description, I have a couple of free PDFs for you. 11 tips and tricks to consider when you jump into your dye pot. I also have what's called the Cooking Color Brew Booklet. And that is a simple recipe booklet with just a handful of food waste items that are a great place to get started if you are natural dyeing, as well as ways in which you could think about repurposing some of your food waste. So both of those downloads are available below. You will also find a link to my digital course called Cooking Color. The information is down below, the link to the sales page where you can click over and read a little bit more about what's included in the class. Would love to see you over there. Have a wonderful week wherever you are, and I hope you have a chance to get out into nature and see what color she might be providing for you. Okay. <laughs> that child's voice carries like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> okay, let me try again. Okay. And although I...